Okay. okay. Well, we'll start with founder, okay? I founded the winery. I built the winery in 1992. It's a long story. How much time do you have? Not winemaker, okay? I'm against the title winemaker because it's pretentious. It's only in the United States, the, the country of personalism, is that a word, mm. uh, that, that, that people call themselves winemaker. The grapes make the wine. We don't. We, 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 we coach them. We, we guide them into becoming the wine that they want to be, right? That's, yep. that's, that's being a vintner, if you like. So I call myself vintner. You call, like in, in, in Spain, you would call yourself a production manager. You, in, uh, you know, in, in France, you would call yourself, uh, uh, I forgot what, but anyway, it's not. Well, there's no word in France for winemaker, as I understand it. No, exactly. It's, it's a maître de chez, cellar master, right? Yeah, right. And so, we, so the person who, it's, it's a trio. We have myself, and then we have our production manager and vineyard manager who's really the person with his hands on the dough and then we have a technical director who's been with me for 28 years Bill Dyer wow. and uh, and uh, the the production manager his name is Taylor Bianco and Taylor has been with me for just two years because the former one uh, retired after 27 years <laughs> with me so yeah it's it's a it must be a fun job right because they stay and what else what else am I well of course I'm the president, and uh, oh, and actually, you know, my, my daughter has been working with me, my daughter Christina, since 2020, and uh, and uh, she was the marketing and sales manager. And uh, a year ago, I thought I said to her, you know, how about if you became general manager? And she says, yeah, I like it. And then I thought, why did I do that? But it was too late. So, <laughs> so now she she but in order to try to avoid her bossing me. I said, well, okay, so I'm the president, you're the general manager, maybe I'll be the CEO, right? So then I have business cards that say president and CEO from those days. Uh, what else am I? I don't know. I'm the, the mother of the, of, the, of the dog, of the chickens, of the bees. The mother of the grapes. Uh, and the grapes, yeah. right. But I wanted to say something about sure. a lifetime achievement. Yeah. What it takes mostly is getting old, okay? <laughs> and, and, and frankly, I think that, you know, because I said, well, what about Christina? No, 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 she's too young. Well, okay, fine. So you have to get old to get a lifetime achievement, right? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you the story where I am. It's my, my home above the vineyard. And I, uh, I bought this home in 1994. It took me a year to decide to buy this house. Now I think, how could I not buy it immediately? But what happens is that I had a home in Sausalito. Okay, let's go backwards. I came to live in this country in 1973. And, uh, sorry. 1975, but I came to San Francisco for the first time in 1973, and uh, I, I, it was my first visit to San Francisco, and I was stunned. It was April. It was a beautiful, beautiful time, and uh, and I had some friends, so I had come with my father, because my father, you know, he, I was his only daughter. More of that later, and uh, so, but but it was it was Easter, uh, or almost Easter, and uh, the winery in Spain was closed for Easter, so I said to my father, you know, I, I think I can stay here for a week and get to know San Francisco, sure, okay, so he left, and uh, and I had a few friends, and then I met uh, a wine critic and, uh, and, and restaurant critic who happened to be the precursor of Parker, uh, nobody knows of him today, and he died a few years ago, but anyway, long story short, I ended up marry him uh, two and a half years later and coming to live in San Francisco where he had an apartment. My father, of course, practically disinherited me. Yeah, because, I would think. And one day, this guy, Robert Finnegan, you know, he called when it was here 1 a.m. and he says, you know, Mr. Finnegan is calling for you, Marimar, uh, from San Francisco. And, you know, that looks at, well, something's going on, isn't it? <laughs> and anyway, so... Where was I? So I was in uh, 75, coming to live here. My father, very upset, because you can imagine. I mean, I have two older brothers, and uh, I'm the youngest and the only girl. So I was supposed to marry well, you know, maybe to, um, to a count, a marquee, somebody in the wine business. Instead, I marry somebody who's a 
critic of wines, right? And uh, no marquee, no count, and thousands of miles away from parental control. He was not happy. So, but he predicted that that marriage was a big mistake and it would last a year. It lasted four. So, proved him wrong. Oh. And, uh, and after four, of course, it was tempting to go to Spain and being, you know, cared for, sorry. And... Uh, and then I remember that after we had some business, it was Christmas and such, and then I got a letter from a friend who said, where are you? You know, uh, there's a very good party coming up. Are you going to be here for that? I thought, I'm going back. So that was it. From then on, I, I just, I, I, I love going back to Spain. My entire family, except for my daughter, are there. And uh, I, I love being here. So, so back to this house, it's, you know, oh, and then uh, we, finally, my father, you know, he had two choices, forgive me or not forgive me. So he did. And so he started to help me out a little bit. And uh, he, with that help, we were able to buy a house uh, in Sausalito. Very nice. Which, yes, which was wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. I still have it, and I thought, I don't need a second home. What am I going to have a second home for? Today I know why. I don't go to Sausalito as much as I used to, of course. I'm here most of the time, and uh, the winery is right down there. I am the fourth generation. Let's put it this way. My brother, Miguel, who today uh, handles the winery in Spain, is the fourth generation from father to son mm. to be in charge of the winery, but my daughter will be the first generation, well, the second generation, from mother to daughter. Oh, that's so, great. So, first time ever, right? Oh, God, first came the dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, I always was uh, living in Spain, of course, and uh, and looking up to my brother, who, Miguel, who is today the, the head of the winery, and he's four years older than me. And I remember in the summertime that uh, my father would take him to the winery to start him on what it was about. And I had to stay home playing with dolls and... And I remember thinking, it'd be nice if I could go, but I know I can't because I'm a girl. So you grow up used to it, right? But uh, as time goes by, um, I I remember once that I, I said, well, I started to work with my father. My father kind of discovered the United States as a market back in 1970-something, uh, 70-something. And... Uh, uh, 60, I'm sorry, 1960-something. What a blur. Mm. And, uh, and he uh, went to a, on, on a, on a government-sponsored trip to New York, and he said, you know, he thought that that had potential. And then, uh, after several boring things that I won't tell you about, he thought that there would be a really a, 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 a great way to, to, to sell to the United States by making a trip there. And he asked me if I wanted to go. Mm. I said yes. He was so good at getting done what he wanted to get done. <laughs> so I went, it was a three-month trip. We started in Chicago. We went all west coast, south, mm, everywhere, east, and uh, yes, yes. And uh, and we sold a lot of wine. So, so so now it's 75. I come to live here. And uh, and I, of course, because of having a, a husband who is a wine critic, I go to the best wineries. Mm. We're just starting in California and in France. Right. It was it was really, really interesting. And really, I learned so much. And little by little, I started to think, would it be fun to have your own vineyard? Right. And uh, and then what happened was that my father, it was uh, ah, one thing that's really important is that I came to live to in, in the United States 20 days before Franco the dictator who ran Spain for 35 years, died. Mm. So Spain started to change after he died. And every time I was going back to Spain, I saw humongous change. And it's today, Spain is nothing like the country that it was. I mean, women are almost, almost equal as men. But in those days, we were second-class citizens. And the country started to change. But my father was a little worried because he had lived through the Spanish Civil War, and he decided to invest someplace else than Spain. Well, my brother convinced him to invest in Chile, where we have a winery today. Oh. And, uh, and then I said, well, Dad, what about California? So finally, I convinced him to invest here. So he, he, he funded enough 
money so that I could buy a 56-acre property. And uh, the interesting thing is that I came here where there are no vineyards in Sonoma County. Everybody was in Napa Valley, right? right. And uh, But I came here and I had no idea about enology because as a woman, I was never allowed to study enology or viticulture. And so uh, I, I, I had a viticulturist who was advising me and I said, you know, this is beautiful. And he says, well, it's very cold, so it will be good for a, for a Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And I thought, I like Burgundy's. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. So I bought it. I remember when my brother asked me, why did you buy it? I said, well, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. And he said, but are there other vineyards there? Mm. I said, no, not really. There was one Chardonnay vineyard. And uh, he said, that's really dangerous. I said, but it's very beautiful. And guess what? I lucked out. Yeah. So sometimes you need luck uh, on your side. And when it's not on your side, you don't talk about it. <laughs> so <laughs> That's good. That's a good thing to live by. <laughs> www.marimarestate.com